Lots of transducers uh, work off a physics phenomenon known as the piezoelectric effect, or the piezoelectric effect, or the, I'm not sure how, how many times I pronounce it, but piezoelectric, it's uh, from the Greek, piezo means to press, and electric means um, electric. So when you press it, you get an electrical uh, a voltage. So here's how it works. Um, this is like uh, silicon, and the, the silicons here are the positive charge. They have a slight positive charge, whereas the oxygen has a slight negative charge. So silicon here, oxygen here. And you notice in the unstressed crystal, um, the negative charged oxygen is out here, uh, but there are two silicons right behind it, and they're back far enough so that the net charge is zero, neutral charge. The same thing goes over here. The silicon's closest to the wall, but there's only one charge, two oxygens further back, the net charge is, is zero, but piezo means press. If I squeeze these together for a small amount of time, what I get is, well notice, these guys got squeezed together. Now these, on the left side, these oxygens got moved closer to the wall. I've got a negative charge on that side. This oxygen got moved back, I've got a positive charge because these positives are closer to the wall, these silicons. I've created a positive charge just by squeezing the crystal together. There are a lot of crystals that do this. Um, quartz isn't the most efficient, but quartz is so cheap that it's used in a lot of different uh, functions. Um, quartz watches, for example, uh, use a little thin piece of quartz, and the pressing of it, the change in voltage, produces a change in size, and that changes the capacitance in the watch, and that, that runs the watch. Um, I could press this and produce a charge. I could also run a charge across it, and it will change its shape. So I can get a voltage by pressing it. I can get a change in shape uh, just working off of uh, just providing a voltage. So one example of this is the accelerometer. Let's see if I can find it here. Now, accelerometer measures changes uh, in acceleration. And the units for acceleration would be like meters per second squared or feet per second squared. But generally, what they look at with an accelerometer is they call it G's, right? One G is, a, is acceleration you feel standing here. And you've heard about three G turns and things like that. I think the uh, shuttle, as it's taking off, uh, launching into space, the maximum, uh, maximum acceleration is three G's. And at that point, you weigh three times your weight. Here's how they use the piezoelectric crystal in an accelerometer. You've got this canister, and the canister is usually about that big. And it's got a, it's got a piezoelectric crystal right here. And it's in the shape of a donut, so you can have a, a post right through it here. So there it is. It's got a spring-loaded mass sitting on top of it. All right? And, uh, and so that's keeping it squeezed. And what happens is, and you're running a you've got a voltage you can measure right out of here. Uh, if you pull this down, if it accelerates downwards, it's going to reduce the load and that's going to cause it's going to cause a voltage negative for negative G's. If I go upwards, it's going to press the mass down and it's going to squeeze it in this direction, which is going to cause a voltage and the sign of the voltage tells you which way it was compressed. These things react very rapidly. Uh, so rapidly, you have to use an oscilloscope generally just to see what the heck happened. Um, if you want to just measure one direction, you only need one accelerometer. If you need to measure two, you need two 90 degrees apart. And if you need to measure three, that's well, that's you need you need three. Okay, but a three-axis set of uh, accelerometers will give you full information on the acceleration. Now, let's uh, let's do some math.